All right, so we have a big announcement. We finally really dialed in on a decision of where we're gonna go with this WLA project. After talking with Matt from Wheels Through Time, we decided that the fenders that we have are actually pretty unique. They're, they're really cool and they're actually in really good shape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna restore the race fender. So this is gonna be a start life as a military bike in the 60s, 50s turned into a racing bike, racing stunt bike. We're gonna bring it back to that racing stunt bike, which gives us a lot more flexibility. You know, the paint doesn't have to be original or anything like that, and it doesn't have to be a, an old factory paint color. We're still trying to figure out what paint color we wanna do, because even though we, we did a poll online, red versus blue, a lot of people said red, but after we did the next video, we showed some, we showed green, we showed gray, we showed red, we showed blue. We had a lot of different more options. So we're gonna throw another poll up uh, really soon. Keep an eye out for that. So since we're gonna redo these fenders, there's only one place I can think of that would do the best possible job. And that's one of the best places on the East Coast, Horsepower Enterprise. Hold on, uh, uh, pause the montage. We also finally found someone who's gonna rebuild the WLA transmission, and you're gonna be surprised who it is. It's, a, it's, a, it's an old friend from the past. Back to the montage. Horsepower Enterprise is one of the leaders in vehicle restoration. Their restoration vehicles have competed at the highest, most elite and prestigious car shows in the world, bringing vehicles to a concourse level of quality. The perfect place to fix our WLA tin. All right, so before we take the transmission to the guy who's going to rebuild the transmission, you, you guys might know him. Uh, we have one stop we got to do. We were looking for a forklift for a, for a couple weeks. We found one, and we got a pretty good deal on it, and then I found another one. So we got two. We're gonna try to take this forklift home, see if we can put it on the trailer. Craig doesn't think it's gonna fit, but you know, Craig's a real naysayer and whatnot. And then, but now we have two forklifts, so we can do like dueling forklift battles and stuff. So I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Craig, you pretty excited about it? I am. It's hard to race forklifts when you only have one forklift. It's so true, though. I am so excited. Check it out, Craig. That is a nice forklift. And we got uh, propane bottles. Can I have a grill? Can I have a party? Do ah. it. Hit my arm on this thing. Straighten your wheels. There you go. I'm gonna back up a little bit, try to get some speed. Do we wanna put the truck in uh, maybe the e-brake on? Doesn't the e-brake only do the back wheels? What is happening? Oh no! What? We should have put in four wheel drive first. So now that that train wreck's done, I'm super pumped to be heading over to Tim's shop. Now you guys may remember Tim. He's the fellow that came in and told us about our 45 engine when we first got it taken out of the bike. Now we're gonna go drop the transmission off at his shop so that he can get it all pulled apart and rebuilt for us. 1980, that was a good year. Nothing good came out of 1980, I'll tell you that. It's not true. So tell us about some of these projects you got going on. Projects? What about, what's this, what's this guy? This your race bike? That's my race bike. I just finished that. Uh, can I see what's going on? Can I see what we got on it here? Yeah. Wow. Her name is Sassy. That's a pretty bike. That's based on a 42. So you guys are running modern tires on there. Oh, yeah. Are these the same, are these the same, like, rims size that I have? That's a 19 on the front. Oh, okay. 19 on the front, 18 on the back, and it's a 2-inch over front-end fork, which we do for uh, road clearance. It's a road race bike. You don't want to be scraping. And this is a, a upgraded That's actually a brake early system? Sportster. That's a Sportster rim, actually. And you see how straight this is compared to yours? Mm-hmm. That's what I was trying to yeah. point out. Yep, yep. Yeah, I guess ours is kinked here. Oh, is it? And that's what kicked this out. Yeah. This is up a little bit, so it... This right here would have been... a sticky tire. Mm -hmm. This is stock to keep this from moving when it, when it locks up. Is that right? 
Yeah, so hold the backing plate. Position. Yeah, okay. I pretty much built this from the ground up. This is uh, all custom stuff I did here. These are the narrow racing tanks. It's a really neat bike. Yeah, I knew you Maybe had to do something. Maybe put this guy in a building a race bike. Get him out there on the track. Have some real fun. Yeah, I've been on the track. I, I, I'm on the track with newer bikes. Yeah. Oh, these are a lot of fun. It's hand shift class. What's you got behind there? It's a project. Can we see it? I know he's going to say that. <laughs> it's a 65 pan head. I've been working on it for a long time. Pretty much since I started racing. You familiar with the 65? Nope. Pan head? Mm. It's the last year for the pan head. It's the only year electric start. Uh, pan head. Oh, okay. So it's the first year for electric start, big twin. Mm -hmm. So the electric glide. It's the first year for the electric glide. So it's last is, is, year. Is that where, ele is that Electra? Yeah, it's for an electric e start. Electric start? Yeah. I never knew that. I had yeah. no idea. Before that, they were called duo glide. Yeah, the dual mm -hmm. glide, yeah. Which is the hydraulic front end and the shocks on the back. Yeah, I was really hot on getting this bike done. And I went to uh, see my first vintage race down in Daytona and got hooked while I was down there. I started buying parts. Mm -hmm. That was in 1992. And you've been hooked ever since. Yeah, and this bike's been on the stand ever, ever since. So I'm determined to get it done this year. And all this motorcycle talk reminds me of one of my favorite verses, Hebrews 12, 14. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. First year, last year, it was pretty unique. It doesn't look like you have a lot to do yet. I know. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Yeah. But these guys keep coming in the door. <laughs> Stupid guys. We'll get her done. Now, can you can you race these if you convert it off of a side shift, hand shift? No, it's a hand shift class. Hand shift class. Yeah. Why rubber on the right peg and not on the left? Because I didn't get rubber on the left one yet. Good answer. I thought that was some secret go fast. No. Secret. No, it's more or less a safety item. Gotcha. You know, if somebody goes down in front of you, you don't want to slice them with this. Mm -hmm. I have rubber on it. But they allow us to upgrade the brakes safety thing mm -hmm. yeah can you, you you know the old brakes don't stop you but you can't go to discs no you can up, no, you up, upgrade the size drums. drum you know honda came out with a motorcycle brand new in 2022 it's got drum brakes front and rear front and rear really it's a little tiny cheap 1800 dollars for brand new motorcycle yeah. drum too, brakes too bad it's a honda i know you're a honda guy i like everything this lady like everything. uh did all this by hand Oh, everything. All this by hand. She did that. She did the pinstriping. Is that her? Is that, is that what she looked no, like? No, it's not her. <laughs> <laughs> she does have red hair. Yeah. But um, I wanted some World War II nose art and a little bit of uh, Vietnam era. So this is a World War II nose art pinup girl. And this, I was on this gun when I was in the service, the Gatling gun. So yeah, she did a really good you job. You were in the Army? So That's it's so going to be cool. the first time out for this bike. Oh, really? Yeah. I have a 39 that I've been racing all these years. The motor's on the top shelf, yeah. off part. So I've been building this for a couple of years. So what's the story behind Shakes All Over? The um, stroker. Oh, the stroker? Yeah. Strokers have a habit of shaking. And this is a... Uh, That's a WLA. 42 WLA? Yep. That's the real deal. That, that bike was found in a junkyard in the trunk of a car. Really? Yeah. So this is just like our bike, another junkyard bike. Was it in the trunk of a car? No, it was underneath the hood of a Thunderbird. <laughs> was it? Yeah. The motor was in the trunk, and the frame and all the sheet metal was inside the car, with no windows or anything, and it was all rusted. So I searched for parts. It's a new old stock frame on that. Did you switch it to Magneto? Yeah. So you cut the fenders down? Yeah. You normally call it bobber. You know, that's what they called them back in the days before the chopper. Now, yours says oil on the tank. Yeah. Ours doesn't say that on the I tank. I think that's Canadian. Oh, this is a WLC. Front end is. Okay. WLC. Mm -hmm. And I think the tanks are. You got these Flanders. They're the Flanders. I was Flanders telling you about. risers. You see the, the stamping? 3.5. Yeah, 3.5 uh, So inches. it's three and a half inches. And they're the Flander bars. We're learning. It's a good looking bike. That bike pulls like a panhead. Does it? That's a stroke. Strokers don't rub as much, but they'll pull. What's with this little valve thing right here? Yeah, that's a WLA. That is for a blackout light. 
blackout lights are these little square lights that they put on uh, army vehicles. They had them on these. And it's like if you're going at night, all you see is that little marker. It's like a little marker light. And that's all they had to go by because they couldn't turn the lights on because, mm. you know, the enemy would see you. Mm. You can find them on Jeeps and the old Jeeps and stuff. It has like a covering almost right yeah. over part of the light yeah so our seat is a special racing seat it's real narrow oh yeah you got any seats like There's that something like that one i think it's more narrow than that is it maybe it might have been cut down no we were told it was a special racing seat oh, like right. the pan was like it's not not big like this it was much smaller maybe maybe you're right maybe it is more like that one that's definitely a lot different than this one that's a 1929 called a ba is this, this is your bike, or are you working this for someone else? That's for a mock-up. I make motor mounts. I see your, what's going on here? Oh, we had to do some repair work on that. It was cracked or broke, I forget what it was. Oh, the motor mounts that you make? Yeah. That connect the... They're, the, on, the, uh, they're on that bike if you want to look at them. I call it a four-bolt motor mount. Is that needed in non-race applications? That is a race application, actually. I put them on four bolts instead of two in the middle. Yeah, right. But this uh, motor I'm working on now is a WR. Yeah, it's got the shoe tappets. You got you had yours apart. Yeah, yeah. You, you, yours had rollers, roller uh, we tappets. Didn't, we didn't look at that part, to be honest. Didn't look at that part. Well, these are called shoe tappets. Mm -hmm. And the cam comes around this way mm -hmm. and rides along this way, and that's where you get your duration. Just all the tappet. Now. And then they went to rollers. This has a front magneto. You were telling us about an engine. Lifters or push rods were like this. That's this motor. Yeah. That's this motor. Yeah. You can't see it, but those shoe tappets are, are like this. Okay. And the whole thing's tilting up this way. And you can see how close the valve is to the bore. Oh, yeah. And, cool. the, and the big gasket area. Mm -hmm. That turned really easily. It's on ball bearings. Oh, and it's not normally on ball bearings? Got the real ball bearings. Yours is on rollers. The cams are even on ball bearings. Wow. Yeah. Somebody polished our rods. Oh, were really? they? Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. a good sign. Yeah. But they drilled. No. No. So how much How much more power would this make than a... About six. Six more horsepower. Yep. Just from making it more efficient, making it move easier. What's that motor going to go, go into? And is it normally red inside here? It helps seal the porous metal. Oh. What, what's it called? Glip tool. Can right there. 1201, red enamel. So th this is used a lot in um, electrical... Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. What's that transmission from? I know it's not a motorcycle. That is a 23550 Ford. It's going to go in Brown Dog. Brown Dog. Over there. Through that door. Yeah. There we go. Ooh. Wow. That's that. my adventure truck. I drove it for the past couple of years to uh, races <clears throat> down south. It's got the original Y Block V8 in it. Kershaw last year. On the way back, it blew a water pump, and I sat at a two-star motel for three days. Oh, no. I slept in a truck. It was <laughs> yeah, that bad. Yeah. Well, it was six, that bad. That's six stars when you're done. And guess what the name of the town was? <laughs> Lancaster, South Carolina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we decided to uh, upgrade. We're going to go with a 351. The ride's pretty good? Pretty smooth ride? The ride's like a rock. <laughs> yeah, does it? It's got a straight yeah. axle on the front. Got good brakes, good power. How do you work on anything with these lifts inside here? You well, can't I take gotta, it up very high. I gotta knock the ceiling out yet. Oh, okay. This lift is a new one. So this is in progress. Idea. All right, so I'll uh, get on this as soon as I can. Boy, that's a mess. So you're gonna go through it, and then we need to take it out once we're done, and then get it cleaned and oh, no. recoded. And... No, I'll clean it up. We should probably pick um, what you want to do finish wise. You just want this blasted like, like this. Oh, okay. Is that, what, is that what they normally do for those? Yep. Okay. What about this? Would we... Uh, I can paint that if you want. What is that now? Chrome? Just the well, chrome peeling off? Chrome. Would that normally have been chrome? No. That would have been... Painted. Painted. Yeah. Black. Oh, yeah. Let's just paint it black then. All the clutch plates here. You want a new clutch? Yeah. You think we need one? If I don't have one, I can get one. Okay. Yeah, let's... I mean, we might as well, right? Do you do you just order from V-Twin? I, I have some parts. Okay. Yeah. I like to use uh, OEM when I can, because aftermarket, just don't know what you're getting. Yeah. And you usually got to work with it. Do you have any leads on a headlight, an original headlight and a headlight bracket? Because we don't have a headlight or bracket on I ours. might have a bracket. 
Okay. I now I don't have a headlight. Well, a bracket would be a good good start. Yeah. And then, what's what's the best way to get a tail light? That's, on a, our that's bike? like an aftermarket Model A tail light. They didn't have tail lights. It, it's from LED. Originally. Is very bright. They didn't have tail lights. Oh yeah. No, they did. Yeah. Yeah. How did they? How were they normally mounted on on the side like that or on the back no, of the? No, on the fender. The tombstone. It's called a tombstone tail light. No. I mean, we don't need tail lights. Yeah, we're a couple months away from needing to worry about that. Well, you got to think ahead, Craig. You got to. I'm thinking. I'm thinking ahead, just not that far ahead. Yeah, I will. It's crazy that we found Tim, someone with this much knowledge and information, right in our very own backyard. That's an interesting frame right behind you there. That's a 45 frame. I picked it up about 15 years ago, and I was told it was made in Canada. They made like a, a dozen run, basically all welded together. It's not. It's not, not braised, braised like yours. Yeah. But yeah, that would have made a good road race frame. Let's see. It doesn't have that big wide flange down here. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yours has. It's not made for the big tank. Run it's going to be a little lighter probably up and through here. It's really a strong frame. What's something like that value at? Oh, uh, about 15. 15 million. 1,500. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what's this thing over here? Tim, you probably love it when guys come in here and... What's this? That's what's why this? I don't advertise. What's <laughs> <laughs> So we continued to ask Tim about every tool, every bolt, and every miscellaneous motorcycle part that we saw. I learned what a ring gapper looked like, and Craig learned not to eat things that he found on the floor. I thought it was a raisin. Now, um, the rear, the center stand, you think we should put one on our bike? Or does that not fit the era? Not, well, I use not that. With the racer. Not, not with no fender, right. There's not going right. to be a fender. I use that for this. You're going to run the full fender on the back? No, nah, we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna take the, the fenders that we have and just uh, make oh, them. Are make, you? Make, yeah, we're going to take what your advice. And oh, we're going gonna, gonna, we're, we're gonna to make them pretty looking. You're going to keep them Bob. Yep. Yeah. Cool. That's very cool. Yeah. And we, we, you know what? It'll be worth just as much in the end. And it'll be probably cooler because that's what everybody's into now. Right. Well, whenever I get this thing running, you got to show me how to, uh, how to ride it. How to shift it. I mean, I got, I got home with it. Yeah. But um, That's amazing. I wasn't shifting very much. But when I was shifting, I like I grinding gears. I you didn't, know, that could be the clutch. Yeah, it might not have been uh, clutch just, adjustment. It might have been right. Yeah, I'm sitting there. I got my foot the whole. I got the clutch the whole way in. Did it feel sloppy. Yes, very sloppy. Oh, did it? Yeah. See, these have a ball, spring-loaded ball in here. That your uh, drum has notches, mm. and that's what that what catches when you shift. I mean, I'm sure that transmission has not had the easiest life. Yeah, I'm sure it hasn't. I mean, just looking at the bike. You know, I thought about that. Yeah. That night, I thought, probably should have scraped those pistons yeah. a little more. <laughs> oh, I, I told Matt, I'm like, oh, no, it's got an X on. Like, they're standard. He's like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, right? <laughs> did, did he figure it out? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, 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 he looked he, at him, he's like, just scrape scraping. a little more. And right there it was. I'm like, ah. Oh. They're not going to like it when we paint it pink. And put what? a Harbor put Freight motor in it. You're going to paint it pink. <laughs> uh, don't do that. And put LEDs all over it. <laughs> You're gonna keep the same color, aren't you? Uh, Craig wants me to keep it red. I like I like that Harley blue that they had back in the '40s. Yeah. That really, it's almost like that color blue. I'll tell you what is close to that grabber blue, like the Ford. Yeah. Ford grabber blue. It's a cool color. I have a pan head painted that color, and it really turned out nice. Yeah, I, I really like that blue. I'm, I'm I think that blue is awesome, but I think that blue. The blue looks better on a full fairing on a full yeah, fender yeah, bike. Right. I think when they're bobbed and they're hot rodded, right. I think the red jumps better on the cud fenders. Like, Plus, we all know red is faster. Oh yeah, that's science. No doubt about it. Yeah. There's some killer looking greens out there. They got some pretty bright killer greens. Bright greens out there. Is that green bad luck. Greens bad luck. No, oh, that's what I always heard. Never heard that. He said he can paint it any color he wants as long as it's red. red. Well, <laughs> yeah, block that out. Well, cool. Thanks for spending the time and showing us your, your shop. Yeah. Yeah, that, thank you. Stop by. Good seeing you again. Yes, yeah, sir. Good seeing you. Yep. Thank you. Is what that a great right way to spend the in? afternoon. We can't thank Tim enough for his hospitality and for helping us get this Harley transmission rebuilt. His shop was so cool. I could have stayed there all day. Just looking at things and listening to what Tim has to say. His stories are incredible and he's very knowledgeable. We still have lots more to do on this rebuild. We have colors to pick. We have some finishes to pick. We have lots of cleaning to do. Come and join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys.